Welcome everyone to the channel. Let's finagle this bagel, baby. So today we will be doing a different kind of video on the channel, which will exceed our normal 5 minutes. We will be taking a look at how to make a real estate pro forma without leverage. So, this example does not contain a mortgage loan or any type of financing. This is only a simplified example, so take it with a grain of salt. The goal of today's video is to show how to find the NPV and IRR of an investment in real estate. At the end of the video, we will be looking at how to discount cash flows manually, and then we will also look at how to discount those cash flows with the aid of a financial calculator. If you really want to learn this stuff well, we suggest you follow our calculations on Excel as we do them. Before we get into it, if you could drop a like for us, that would be extremely appreciated. A lot of work goes into creating this kind of educational video. Let's get into it. So the potential gross income for the first year is $200,000, and it's set to grow at a pace of 2% per year. The vacancy and collection losses are 8% of the potential gross income. Operating expenses are 35% of effective gross income. Capital expenditures are 5% of effective gross income. The difference between the below and above line approach is whether or not you are including capital expenditures into the NOI. The above line method is more conservative and will include the capex. The holding period is 5 years and the discount rate is 10%. The end goal of this problem is to figure out the NPV and IRR of this investment and state whether or not it is a good investment. As we move along, we will add more assumptions. So, I already detailed the X and Y axis. The Y axis is basically the formula to get to the NOI, which is the potential gross income minus the vacancies, which gives the effective gross income. You take the effective gross income minus the operating expenses minus the capital expenditures, which finally gives the net operating income. At the end of all of this, we will calculate the net sales proceeds, which we will use to find our NPV. Let's get right into it. The first year potential gross income is highlighted in yellow as you can see, it was the potential gross income as stated in the first sheet. Moving on to the credit and vacancy losses, you take the $200,000 and multiply it by the 8%. You minus both of those together and find the effective gross income. We then take the effective gross income, multiply it by the 35%, and we do the same of the capital expenditure line. We take the effective gross income, minus the operating expenses and the capital expenditures, which will give the net operating income in the end. We said that the potential gross income was going to grow by 2% every year. So you take the first year potential gross income of 200,000 and multiplied by 102%. Since we want to drag this formula over, we have to put dollar signs to freeze the rows and columns in the growth rate. By default, we will also grow the rest of the vacancies and credit losses by 102% every year. We will do the same with every single other line. What you should notice is that, if we just want to know the NOI, all we need to do is take the first year NOI and multiplied by 102% every year, instead of doing the whole matrix. Great, so now we have the NOI for years 1 through 6. So you might be wondering why we needed to find the NOI for year 6. The reason is that the cash flows in this problem occur at the beginning of each period. And, the sale of this property is going to occur at the end of year 5, which is equivalent to the beginning of year 6. So to find the net sales proceeds, we need the sale price. As you can see, we added the terminal cap rate, which is of 8%. So you take the NOI of year 6, and you divide it by the rate of 8%. This should give 1.5 million. Next, to find the net sales proceeds, you need to take the sales price and minus the selling expenses. This will give an amount of 1.47 million. Okay, now on to the last leg of the problem. To find the NPV, we need to find the cash flows that occur every year. 
In year 6, we start off by including the net sales proceeds to the cash flows. So the acquisition price of this property was 1 million. We put that value in negative because it represents cash going out. And we put the minus 1 million a year zero because all cash flows occur at the beginning of the periods, and this property was bought at the moment zero. So now as you can see on the screen, a lot of things have changed. We inputted all of the calculations but don't worry, we will go over them in detail. So, the point of calculating total cash flows in this last line is to know what is the end line. If we took all the money going in, and all the money going out, at the end of the year, what is left? Just to recap the total cash flows. At the beginning of year zero, there is a $1 million amount that is spent. Then, from year zero to year one, there was a $110,000 cash inflow. Year one to year two, there was a cash inflow of $112,000. So on and so forth. At the end of year five, there is the sale of the property for a value of $1.47 million. Plus the year six NOI. So the way we calculate the NPV is by discounting each cash flow by a 10% rate each year. So the 1 million of year zero doesn't need to be discounted because no time has passed. The year one cash flow of 110,000 needs to be discounted by 10%. So you need to do 110,000 divided by 110%. This will give the present value of that cash flow. If you don't understand why that is, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below, and we will gladly respond with further explanation. So we do the present value of each of those cash flows, and sum of them up to find the NPV. Present value of each of those cash flows. And sum of them up to find the NPV. What we just did was the manual way of finding the NPV. Now, to find the same number in your financial calculator, all you have to do is press on the CF button, enter minus 1 million for CF0, press enter, press the down button, enter 110,400, press enter, press the down button, for FO1, input 1, enter 112,608 for CO2, press enter, press the down key, enter 1 for FO2, then, the process repeats itself. So, once you're done doing that, press the NPV button on your calculator, enter 10, which is the discount rate, then, press the down key, and finally click on compute. This will give you the NPV, which should match up with the NPV that we calculated previously. Next up, in Excel, type in the IRR formula, and select all of the cash flows from line 12. Press enter, and you get the IRR. On the financial calculator, press the IRR button and simply press compute. Both numbers should line up. Now, for the final decision of whether or not you should invest in this real estate project. For the NPV, our answer is greater than zero, therefore the investment should move forward. For the IRR, the number is greater than the discount rate, therefore this is a good investment. If you made it to the end of this video, you are a baddest bitch. If you feel like dropping some generosity on the channel, that would be much appreciated. As always, thank you for your time, 